Your style and your flavor make the city rock. They must say the season come out with a bang. Coach means it. Best round here. Remember that. all right welcome back to the channel everyone thanks very much for tuning in really appreciate you being here so we await the presence of our general secretary uh jamaica football federation general secretary in um dennis chung he will be on in short order so we await him so people big up yourself thanks for tuning in we have to um big up to dexter uh lemby kissa he actually based on how he has been performing got a an extension signed an extension to his contract there at wolves that's a big deal for the youngster um it's a good look for the jamaica under 20 player and before long it's a possibility that you know we might see him in the grand scheme of things where the Cena team is concerned. Let's hope that that will happen. But we have a few questions that we will be asking the uh, Gensec in, in, in this one. Definitely will be asking him a, a, a few questions. We certainly want to get some answers where these are concerned. So big up to everybody. Bless up um, Shaquille Smith. Thanks for tuning in. All the persons who are already on. And come at the man, come at the hour. And this man is a man of time. He's spot on with his time. So, again, people, welcome to the studios of the coach's desk. Studio of the coach's desk for the second time in Mr. Dennis Chung. All right, Mr. Chung, uh, welcome again to the coach's desk. Thanks very much Damn for you. tuning in. We appreciate you taking the time out to be here on another episode of the coach's desk your second time around um how are you doing i'm good you know good good yeah man that uh, how, how was the day you no know, you probably have a lot of work doing you know how was today's workload you know um people don't don't understand that there is a lot of work in in football administration um you know, if people talk about the, the senior men's senior men's team and the senior women's team, but it's nine different programs we have, you know. Right now we have under 17 running, mm -hmm. you know, um, we have under 15 team, under 20, um, on the women and men's side. And then we have to deal with football locally, you know, the, the, the Premier Leagues, for example. You know, we have the Jamaica women Premier Leagues. Um, that's happening now, which was trying to get that competition going. So there, there's a lot of things involved, you know, a whole lot of things involved. So when somebody say a football match happen, um, there's a whole lot that goes behind a football match when it happens. Yeah, man. And and if, if I may say, we appreciate the work that you are putting in. Um, quote, unquote, new kid on the block, new kid in the position. But you are an individual that is not new to administration and i guess the same experience that you have had over the years you will bring it to the jamaica football federation yeah man definitely. all right all right so to begin with uh mr chung mm -hmm. the people are, are are still you know some people are still having their growth they say that they might be having some trust in you based on what you are doing now you know what i mean um i think it's a part of the, the new thrust to be more media friendly mm -hmm. um you spoke about that the first time you came on this show about um being media friendly and we are seeing where that is happening so to begin with it's it, it's a good thing that you have been you are doing actually to um be media friendly because that was the issue with the the, the, the previous um general secretary especially 
the hardcore fans of, of, of football on the YouTube space. However, personal, I'm just going to put some of the points to you, Sir, Sir, Sir Chung, mm -hmm. what is actually out there. See how best you can, you know, enlighten or tackle some of these issues and to reassure the fans basically the way forward. So what I'm hearing on the grounds is that is this media thrust a massive move to spread the election gospel or it's about transparency on the JFF, JFF's part which you initially spoke about if given the opportunity? Um, well, you know, um, <clears throat> you know, it, the, the perception must be founded by reality, um, you know, um, and the fact of the matter is that um, we have opened up to the media, we have come out and, you know, made a lot of things known, um, we, 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 we have the, um, the, the general secretary's report that was put out there with a new constitution, with, um, with the financial statements. So we're, we're trying to be transparent. Um, you know, elections is not my purview. You know, um, you, you got that? Yeah, man, I, I was listening. I just put you yeah. because you're speaking, put you in the center. Yeah. Um, yeah. Elections is not my purview. You know, um, that's, the, that's the purview of the president and mm -hmm. his team. You know, what I am there to do is to ensure that the administration runs properly and to be as upfront as possible with everybody because and the reason why i'm transparent is because i don't like surprises right mm -hmm. so things will go wrong definitely um but at least you know i'm going to go out there and i'm going to say this is the situation you know and i'm going to be transparent i mean when you're transparent about administrative issues um it actually helps your situation you know, because it means that there are more people out there um, who know about it, who can assist you with it. So it's transparency. I mean, election, I, I don't know how this is a part of election. Um, <laughs> if I, I'm not the one who is going to be reelected, you know, um, it's a, it's a president who is going to be reelected. I mean, granted, he was the one who kept saying to me that, you know, you need to come in this position, I guess. He should be given some credit there for, for it. Um, but at the end of the day, it, for me, it's, it's about transparency. All right. It, it, we, we can delve into it. But, I mean, you, you probably um, don't know how would that affect the election. But, I mean, he brought it there. You seem to be a very good PR person, good um, person in your, in your job. So, I mean, when you promote this thing, you know, it, it helps in terms of the whole electing process. So that's basically what some of um, the, the, the people are saying. But let's move on from that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the new policies that are put in place since you have been in office? We want you to outline a few of yeah. those so that the people can know what is um, different. Well, we, we had a new constitution that's in place. I mean... That was being driven from the board level, but that's in place now. Um, you'd have seen that I was very transparent with the general sector's report. You know, I sent it out not just to the delegates, but to the media overall, including the financial statements. Um, we have the procurement policy, a new procurement policy that has been put in place and um, accepted by FIFA. And then... Um, on a board meeting this month, we're going to be looking at passing two additional policies, which is the sexual harassment policy and also the um, whistleblower policy. Um, there's one more policy that we're looking at. The name slips right now. I think it's a safety policy. Um, and also what we're going to be looking at in maybe a month or two is the, the code of ethics that's going to guide behavior right across the organization. So those are the main policies we've put in place. Uh, but we've been doing some other things. I mean, working on projects um, in terms of trying to get project funding, um, working on ensuring that our, our finances are improved. You know, those are some of the main things. Um, looking at the internal structure, 
in terms of the staffing arrangement, their effectiveness, you know, putting the budget in place for 2023, you know, um, which we, we hope to get approved by the board on the 21st, and also looking at strategic objectives for the JFF. And there has been a lot of planning um, because the next six months are going to be very, very busy in terms of football activities. All right. Um, you made mention of two things that jumped out at me, Sir Chung. Uh, the whistleblower policy and the sexual harassment policy. Yeah. Um, is there or are there situations where these issues came up and they are known why policies had to be put in place? And well, while answering that, I want you to elaborate on both of them so that we can have an understanding of why are these policies implemented and what are they? All right. The reason why I implemented them is because I believe that every organization, um, especially when you're talking about dealing with children in an organization um, who are a weaker set of people, right? They have less power than adults. They have to have it in place. So I look at it, for example, that if I have a daughter or a son who is going to play football, right? I want to know that they're going into a secure environment, right? Um, and sexual harassment is, is one of the big things that comes to the fore. Um, so I said, in order for us to protect the children, because there are children under 15, under 17, under 20, there are children. Mm -hmm. We need to ensure that we have the policy and particular sexual harassment policy in place. Because as a parent, one of your biggest fears is that your child will be molested right and therefore that sexual harassment policy will ensure that there are certain guidelines for persons to behave right um, particularly as it relates to children but also within the, the the organization itself the secretariat you know you don't want the staff members to be exploited in that way and and harassed um so i thought that it was necessary to have that in place because this policy, the sexual harassment and the, the whistleblowing, is really creating equity in terms of everyone in the organization. So whether it is the person who is at the top, right, like myself, or the person who is, is the bearer, right, everyone feels empowered to know that if you are going to be harassed, are molested you have the ability to report it and get action on it um so the sexual harassment is policy is, is very straightforward um the whistleblowing what that does is that it allows people to if they see any wrongdoing or anything that offends them in the organization to report it without any fear of um being any vindication vindictiveness sorry or anything like that right um so that's basically what it, is. it gives them a safe place to report things that they think are wrong and does that affect internal people or and or both external and internal when you say internal what you mean for example if um someone in in the organization sees something and they decide to blow a whistle. Will that affect the individual's job or position? No, no, no. They have a safe place. And that's why I say it's a safe place. All right. So we set up a, we're going to set up a, 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 a body that, or a person, multiple, that they can go and report it. And it will be action. You know, it might be, some, it might be setting up a body outside of the organization that they can report it to. Um, but we're going to make sure that everyone feels safe in terms of reporting things that are wrong. So it, it, it's similar to something like the um, what the PSAJ has in Crime, crime Stop, right? Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah, something like that, something okay. like that. Okay, yeah. all right, clear. So persons can feel assured that whenever they give some information, you know, it will be protected. What, what about 
<laughs> you know what? Let me leave that one because it might affect us. Um, so you spoke on the policies. And what, what really sparked those seismic shifts that really came out through you being in the position now? Because, I mean, if it, if it were there for so long and nobody, or we could say persons turned a blind eye to it, what basically caused this sudden seismic um, shift? Um, I just, I, I, that's just how I operate. I mean, even when I'm at NSWMA, I put those policies in place, you know, and that's just how I operate. I believe that persons must be protected. Um, I believe that persons must not be, you mustn't fight against people because, you know, they hold a position um, mm -hmm. and, you know, doing it any other way is discriminatory, you know, so I, I that's just me. I just believe that, you okay. know. And from my personal point of view, as I said, I think about my 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 daughter. Mm -hmm. You know, I wouldn't want her to be subject to that. And I don't think that you know one of the things I hate more than anything else <clears throat> is when people have power and abuse that power by abusing people. I hate it. You know, I think everyone should be treated equi equitably. You know, mm -hmm. um, and that's just how I am. And therefore, I thought that. Those things are things that are necessary for a modern organization. All right, all right. Um, in terms of the players, will this sort of, I'm going to use the term task force, protect the players, for example, if they see some injustice and they speak out against it in a manner that might not seem derogatory, will they be protected as well? Of course, everybody will be protected. However, one of the things that these policies speak to is that if you maliciously, right, um, say something against somebody, then, you know, you can face disciplinary action, right? So it's persons with legitimate concerns, right? Uh, but if someone says something, say, boy, they don't like, they, they, they see, they tell a lie, you know, that, that somebody is doing something, then obviously they have to face consequences for that. Mm -hmm. And the policies do address those. Some amount of independence in terms yeah, of man, the, yeah, the man, person. Yeah, man, yeah, man. So it's multiple options would give people to report, you know. Okay. Right? It's not just one body, for example. It would give people multiple options to report. And 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 penalties, somebody just, that, that question just jumped out at me, I guess. Um, penalties for any sort of harassment sexually, those violators will be not investigated. Will they be expelled or expelled, sorry, from the... Well, um... I mean, uh, listen, listen, listen to me. Sexual harassment is a crime, you know. Mm -hmm. So if I know that someone is committing a crime, I'm going to call the police. That's what I'm going to do. Essentially, yes. I'm going to report it to the police. <laughs> So that will be dealt with at the, the level that it's supposed to be dealt with, at the criminal level. Anything right. that is a Clear. crime, that... I will report it to the police. Right, right. So as they say on the street, Mr. Chong, no umpis thing in the JFF going forward under your watch. Well, I don't I don't believe in in, in hiding things, you know. You know, I believe in, in transparency. That's just how I operate. You know, and I don't believe in people doing things unfairly, right? Um, mm -hmm. If you're going to do something wrong, then that's a personal choice, but you must also suffer the consequences, consequences of doing things wrong. I mean, and you'll see that people have come out and spoken out against JFF, people that I know personally, and I said to them, hey, where is the evidence? If you say something and you don't have evidence, and I see people do a lot, a lot of criticisms, for me, criticizing something without evidence is what you call gossip. That's basically what it is. Right. So I will challenge people. I will say, and I've done it. I will say, hey, show me the evidence. You know, um, if you're going to criticize someone and accuse someone of something, show the evidence, right? Because people can't just, once you destroy someone's reputation, they don't want to speak it up like that. Sure. You know. All right. Um, well said there. Now, the deficit that the JFF is still in, how best do you plan to reduce that deficit? And do you have a, 
a timeline per se? Um, well, you, you try and, and manage the finances and, and get the, the, um, the, the, the funds in, right? Um, um, you know, of course, you have certain objectives to meet. Um, there are a few things to do. Number one, as we've done, we've created a budget and we want to have policies and procedures in place that let us stick as much as possible to that budget so that we don't have unnecessary um, expenditures or unauthorized expenditures happening. You want to ensure also on the revenue side that you get the revenues in, whether it be from sponsorships, um, from fundraising or from grants. Um, so you have to monitor that. So it's a management thing, but a big part of it, and this is why you know I'm out there trying to be transparent and build a brand, is that we need to ensure that people have confidence in the JFF, right? And therefore, we're trying to build that back because I'm not going to ask someone to invest in a product where the brand is 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 has been damaged. You know, um, we're going to work on building it, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to build it back, you know, and get a proper brand value out there. So when as someone comes in and says, "Hey, I'm going to sponsor the JFF," um, then they know that they're getting the value from it. It's not just a matter of throwing money in football. But there are millions of people that follow football, and Jamaican football in particular, right? And we have a situation now where we have well-known corporate people trying to get involved in the JFF, you know? Um, right. And, for example, Chris Dering is the chairman of the marketing committee. Right, we have right. two well-known corporate people who were, were tying up contracts with right now to assist the JFF, mm -hmm. you know? Um, that's the sort of thing that is, is bringing back confidence to the organization. So in another two weeks or so, mm -hmm. you'll hear these names. Within a week or so, you'll hear about these names, about these people. We have, a, we have a, 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 an agreement with Adidas. You don't get bigger than that. Yeah. Adidas has basically expressed an interest in JFF and the football, Jamaican football, by saying, hey, we'll sponsor you. And then we hear that someone else is saying that they have another major sponsorship they're trying to line up for us. You know, that is oh. how you close the gap. True. Yeah. So it, it's safe to say then, uh, Mr. Chung, that there has been a shift in how people see the image of the JFF community. In other words, people can safely say that they can trust the JFF now. Well, I'm not going to tell people when to trust the JFF. That's a mm -hmm. personal choice. Okay. My no, role, I'm... my hey, role ahead, is just ahead. so is just so do the things that are right and do the things that are necessary. At the end of the day, you're going to have some people, like always, with everything, who can never. Um, trust because they're, they're filled with conspiracy theories, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to do what's necessary as long as I have people coming, corporate people, to say, hey, we want to be a part of it. As long as I have sponsors who say we want to be a part of it. Um, I just tie up something also with, 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 with respect to the World Cup, with the women coming, and you'll hear about that in terms mm -hmm. of corporate sponsorship in it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, um, as long as I do that, then I am creating a product that I'm saying to people, hey, you can't trust the product. There are some people who are going to say, no, I still don't trust it. But mm -hmm. as long as the majority of people trust it, which I think is happening, then I'm, I'm good with that. And, you know, when I, and, and I'm not saying to anybody to trust me, just watch the, what I do, mm -hmm. right? And look at the result of what we do. That's all I'm saying. I don't want anybody to trust me um, just because, you know, I, I, I think that, you know, I'm a good person. No, look at what I do, right? And at the end of the day, you know, you make up your mind, you know, what you want to do. But I'm going to try and create value for the football, mm -hmm. right? Um, we have our, our coaches. We brought in some good international coaches, you know, we're ensuring that there's a certain amount of accountability, um, I was speaking with Wendell Downswell today about the under-17 and, 
You know, he thinks you have a very good chance of qualifying for the World Cup. And what we do is provide the support. And we said to the coaches, and I said to all my coaches, hey, I'm not going to tell you how to coach, but, but give me the result. If you don't give me the result, then there's accountability for that. Mm -hmm. You know, and, yes. and that's just how I operate. All right. But you, you said that you don't want people to trust you. And and that, that's basically bold to say, you know, Mr. Chubb. Uh, <laughs> I kind of understand what, you, you are, what you're saying or where you're coming from. But since you don't want to take it um, for it to be on a personal level, then can the fans, the 12th man of football in Jamaica and in the diaspora, say that the mismanagement, because that's what they thought was happening before mismanagement and maladministration right. is it a thing of the past since you don't want to go out there and say the trust issue is um mismanagement and maladministration a thing of the past well i'm going to do my best i recognize the things that have caused the issues mm -hmm. and i'm going to do my best right and i never said i don't want people to 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 necessarily just trust me don't trust me like that what i want what i'm saying is that it's more important to trust the process and the outcome than the person. Yeah, right? but the individual behind the process helps. Of course. The of course. Yeah, so, so of course. I, I don't want but you then, to exclude yourself, you know, Mr. Chunk. Yeah, well, well the individual, you, the individual because you are really the you are really the one that operates the mill and drives the mill. So if, if the process of the mill going around can be trusted, but the individual operating so that the mill goes around can't be trusted then th there's an issue so i don't want you to really exclude yourself but i kind of no, I, no, I really no. understand what you're yeah, saying yeah, but the point i'm making is that it's not an individual you must trust it's the process right and the outcome that's the important thing the process and the outcome right um and i am going to try right along with my team because it's not just me alone to ensure that we have proper management. Now, the policies in place is one of the things to ensure that you have management because you have policies to guide actions. And this is why we're doing all of this, right? Um, we publish our financial statements in 2021 once they're audited, right? Mm -hmm. And we also um, do what we need to do in terms of getting the funding to finance the programs, right? Um, one of the ways that people can look and see is that one of the things that we're doing, we are making efforts to pay down all the outstanding debts. A, lo a lot of these debts is coming from, from after 1998. A lot of people don't realize it. A lot of the deficit is way before the, the current administration, right? Yeah, well, I think the people are, and, are quite aware of that. We're making efforts to pay it down. Right. Mm -hmm. That is how the trust process comes in. Right. You know, those are the things that we're doing to try and manage that. So look at the result. You know, um, when we are when 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 we, we act and you see the result coming out, then you know you can make that determination. You know, right. I mean, of course we want people to get on board, and we're seeing a lot more people getting on board, but look at the results, you know, and, and that is the important thing because our job is to give you a brand that you believe in, to give you a product that you believe in and will recognize how important football is to um, Jamaicans. Right. And 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 the people don't... The, the, I think the, the, the Jamaican people, we like action over just the words that are spoken. Yeah. And, and it, it, it's just for us to wait and see where we go and based on the some of the things that you're saying um we have to basically be guided by, by what you say so i guess the actions will come by what you say and we look towards that now when will um you made mention of the auditing uh audited report when will the 2022 one be ready well the audit won't be ready until three months after the year end which is the end of march which is when it is due to fifa Mm -hmm. So once we do the audit, we'll send it off to FIFA. It will not be published until it's it's um ratified at Congress, though, right? Because you know, um 
it, it is when it goes to Congress that it's actually passed, right, and, and, and accepted. Um, so the 2022 will not be published until the GenSec report comes out, right, which is going to be, um, Congress is normally about in November, December, so about early November, in October, early November is when you're going to see the 2022 numbers. Uh, but the audit will be completed by the end of March and, okay. and sent off to FIFA as is required. All right. Um, fair, fair, fair enough there. Um, and I, I think I heard that you said there is some sort of deficit for the 2022 period. Because yeah, 2022, of COVID 2022 and all we, 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 ran a, we ran a deficit. I can't say what it is, but mm -hmm. we did run a deficit. All right. So, based on the policies that you are you would have presented, Mister Chung, and and some people call you a sweet talker, great orator, and you're good for the media, you're good for the JFF, right. and you know that whenever it comes on to sports generally, and by what we are talking about now, football, it is important that all stakeholders play their part. No, you'd mm -hmm. you'd 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 have hired a, a a pretty decent coach coaching staff, right. and um we see where the coach was in England, uh, recruiting top of the line players, um. In terms of now taking it away from the old scenario of administration aspect, will these personnels on the field of play, the sidelines, the equipment manager? Whoever is there, will they be held accountable? Because that's what the fans want, you know. They want a winning reggae boys. So, mark you with all what you're saying, it's pretty decent. But at the end of the day, the fans will segue from these policies, and when they go to sit on that metal bench mm -hmm. or chair. In the grandstand or the bleachers, they want to see Jamaica playing good football yeah. and winning games. I know that that is very difficult to assure, but how do you see that aspect of it? That is the responsibility of the coach and the manager for the teams, right? I am not going to, 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 to tell somebody how to do their job. What I'm going to do is demand the accountability for the job. So in other words... You get a manager and you get a coach to deliver the positive results. If they don't deliver the positive results, then when a team, for example, in, in, in the Premier League is not doing well, what happens? They get a new coach. Okay. They get a new manager. But I can't tell them what to do and then hold them accountable for it. I no, think they're no. competent. No, and but I think I'm, that they will, they will do it. What I'm saying, you know, Mr. Chung, is that you present all these policies and implement stuff. Give them what they want, and then they come up and and you basically answer the question. You get rid of them. Yeah. So, no, no, no need to prolong on on that aspect because I do believe that with all the policies and the 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 the, the grand scheme of things, we want to reduce deficit. It's all about getting the players on the park, hoping that they do with competent the managing coaching staff and players to get qualified for world cup and i think that will assist in the whole process of eliminating um some of those monetary deficit that we've been having don't, don't you think so oh definitely i mean when you go to the world cup you get um if our men's team make the world cup they get we get 10 million us dollars up front mm -hmm. you know um so definitely Okay, okay. All right. Um, so basically, it's not only result in the administrative aspect of it, but it's basically result on the field of play. And I think that's what the fans really want to see. Yeah. It, it's been a while, Mr. Yeah, Chung. That... Administration creates the infrastructure and creates the environment. Right? Absolutely. To support it. And that's what that's what my main role is in terms of the 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 result from the field that is the players the coach and the management of the team right mm. that is their job so 
I mean, even forget about the coach. If a mm -hmm. player is playing and the player does not play well, what does the coach do? The coach Drop replaces him. the player. Mm -hmm. Right? So if the coach has that latitude to pick the team and choose whoever he wants and gets all the support that's needed from the JFF that he asks for and he doesn't deliver what you do. Same thing that you said, get rid of him. Right. And if Our the manager replacement. does not manage the affairs of the teams properly, right, and creates problems for the team, what you do? Yeah, you man. Yeah, yeah, manager. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, that, right. and that's, my, that's, my, that's my job. My job is to ensure that the infrastructure is there and the accountability is there in order to facilitate the team's performance. Well, since you're on the spot, sir, um, sir Chung, since you have been in office, is there any remnants? I don't know if that is a strong word to use. <laughs> or is there any ineptness that you'd have seen since you have taken office? And if there be, do you have the power to actually relieve persons of their duties that one of your duty as the gensec? But what I would say is that I have the I have the authority to 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 actually relieve persons or make recommendations, you know, depending on what it is. Um as to whether there is ineptness, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna comment on that. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, um what 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 you need to look at is is what was there before and you know and where we are now and where we're going and you know make that decision. Um but I'm not going to comment on the, the performance of anyone in the past, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, that, that's not an interest for me. My interest is just to see the, the JFF and the football do better, you know, and just, just put everything in place to ensure that that happens. All right. Um, I, I understand that aspect of it as well, so mm -hmm. I, I don't want to push it too much. But the nuances of the previous general secretary that would have caused certain things these are, would say, two of the most highlighted things that um, would have come out more in public. There might be others that would have been causing issues, but those weren't highlighted. Um, and I'm speaking on the basis of delegation sizes going to games outside of the country, taking flights. I want you to comment if this is going to be the same sort of uh, machinery going forward where that is concerned and another sticky issue that we saw that mm -hmm. was very mm -hmm. distasteful and you probably would know where I'm going. It had to do with the travel arrangements for players. Will these things improve under your watch, sir? We are doing everything to ensure that we get the greatest value out of any dollar that we spend. Um, we assess very carefully the, 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 the delegation that goes. You'd have seen that the president made, and myself made some decisions. For example, that um, coming from last year, you see, we don't attend friendly matches. We didn't attend the Cameroon match overseas, mm -hmm. right? We don't attend camps overseas, right? What we have taken a decision to do is to ensure that we only attend the the, the matches that count, the tournaments and, you know, the, the real matches um, that were needed at, you know. Um, but those are those are decisions that have been taken. Right, so you can you can look at that. Um, we've taken certain decisions in terms of how we constitute and send away delegations, right? Um, and that's a path we're going to go down. So we we want to ensure that we're getting the best bang for the buck, and that's the important thing. You know what a delegation size is depends on what is needed to create the value, right? Um, so football delegations are large, and sometimes the delegation, and even in the past, right, um, you see the football delegation large. That is because the team has asked for the delegation. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. You understand what I'm saying? So many times you see the, the, the people that go away. It's not the administration that say, this is the person I'm saying. No, the team asks for the delegation. They ask for certain people, right? Certain functionaries, right? In terms of the travel, we've made certain decisions in the travel. Uh, but I can tell you one of the things that costs us a lot of money is that the arrangements will be made to travel. And then the last moment, people change their mind and say, oh, I don't want to go again or I don't want to go this route again. It costs money for that right, change. Right. So there are certain things that have been put in place um, to mitigate against that. And, and you see now, this is after the fact. It took a new GenSec for us to know that some of these things were happening. Players changing their mind that they want to take a different route or whatever. But I, I, I understand. All right. But we, we thank you for that transparency on that matter again. Um, the last time you were on the show, uh, Mr. Chung, you made, we, we asked you the question on, on the matter of the, the logo, the Reggae Boys logo. You categorically said that it is owned by the JFF. Yeah. And another question came from the comment section. Uh, incidentally, um, I want persons in the comment section to get their questions up and running. Uh, mm -hmm. Just put the questions in the in, in the chat, and I'll try to pose them to uh, Mr. Chung. I've been, we have been, well, I've been asking questions for what, and he has been answering for forty-one minutes, so he has a, a, a quite a few more <laughs> minutes to go. But Sir Chung, you said that you will be checking on that. Could you reveal to us what um, your checks? Listen, listen. The mm -hmm. JFF owns the brand. Mm -hmm. Right, all the trademarks, right, and the logo. Now, if someone goes and registers a well known brand, mm -hmm. it does not give them the right to the brand, you know. Remember the, 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 the restaurant that we had in Jamaica called McDonald's, mm -hmm. and they actually were preventing the real McDonald's from coming to Jamaica and saying that they can't use the golden arches because mm -hmm. they have trademark registered it here in Jamaica, mm -hmm. the courts rule against them because logically, if a brand is known internationally, right, and you go and register the brand that is already known internationally, you have no rights to that brand. Okay. I mean, could you, for example, if Tesla, and I had a conversation last night about it, if Tesla doesn't register in Jamaica and you go and register Tesla brand. You think you have the right over Tesla who is well known? No, no. but when, it, when you're doing registration like that, Mr. Chung, I mean, the, 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 if you register it, is registering a, a trademark. I mean, you, I don't think you can use somebody's name that is already or a brand that is already there. So whoever is registering probably missed something because... From what I know, there is some sort of form that you have to fill out. It's not, to it's check not just it a, against all other things that are out there. Yeah, but it's, it's not just a form. It's a matter of you ever hear about a thing called poor copyright. So that again, poor man's you, you, you broke poor up a while ago. Poor man copyright. Poor man's copyright. A poor man's copyright is someone who can't afford to go and spend the money right. to do a proper registration of an intellectual property. And what he will do is, is, is write it in a, in, a, in, a post, in a mail, right, a letter, and post it through the post, post office. Yeah, what that does is say, this is the date on which I created it, mm -hmm. right? So therefore, if a brand is well-known out there, right, and you hear about the brand and then go and register the brand. The fact of the matter is that the facts is that the brand is already out there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So even if you go and register it, it don't mean nothing. If you That's... if you if, if you go if you go and register Apple computers in Jamaica, what do you think will happen? You think but... you think you can prevent Apple computers from coming to Jamaica? No, you can't. Right. But the, that's what the, I'm saying, Mr. Chung. I, I think based on the nuances that you go through and the intricacies, there must be a, a, a minute difference. Like you said, you know, 
the, 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 the rings are the semicircle or the ovals. Those things were a little bit different, but the name itself proved to be overpowering more than just those little um, intricacies on the brand. Right. So if it goes through that process, I don't think it can be done. But like you said, there uh, there are aspects, if it is registered in another uh, dominion, so to speak, can it be used still, but the, 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 the original original branding? If you find out that it is happening, what will be done on your from your standpoint? On our, from our standpoint? Yes. If 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 we are 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 being prevented from using it, right? Somewhere or someone poses a challenge to us, then we just have to respond to that. So maybe there's a legal challenge, I don't know. But we'd have to respond to it. But the fact of the matter is that, I mean, the, the, the reggae girls, the reggae boys, for example, those are names of a product, you know. Mm -hmm. Who owns the product? JFF. Nobody else in the world can own the Jamaican football team. And the Jamaican football team is the reggae boys and the reggae girls. You understand? Mm -hmm. The JFF has a logo. Nobody else in the world can own the logo of the JFF because it is the logo of the Jamaican Football Federation. Right? So you yes. can go and register it. But at the end of the day, what are you registering? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I mean, but isn't there some sort of juris jurisdiction that can still cause you to make that sort of registration? Because you said if Apple is registered in the United States, based on what you said earlier, it can be registered in Jamaica. But who gets the stronger uh, hold on the product? Must be the parent, the so, person, the person right. who actually owns the product that it refers to. Right. So basically, what you're saying, it can be registered still. That's what I'm getting from what you're saying, you know. But the 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 the, the, the parent owner still has more rights and talk, and can ask you to cease and desist. Yeah, 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 yeah. They can ask you to cease and desist. I mean, what I'm saying, you know, is a well-known brand. If you have a brand that is well-known, if you have a brand that is not well-known, right? Like mm -hmm. someone come up with an invention and you never know about the invention, right? Or nobody much knows about it. Then people can go and, and trademark an invention, but it's not well-known. But if the invention is well-known, right? Then the evidence is there. Right? And remember, you know, this is what we're trying to prove. You know? The courts will always try to prove where is the evidence. Can you prove to me that you are the rightful owner of this invention? Right? And, and the trademark is a way, when you register a trademark, is a way of providing evidence. But if someone else, right, as I said, suppose the, the, the poor copyright, you created something and you you mailed it to yourself, right? But you didn't register it. And someone goes and registers it after. But you have this, the, 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 the postage letter to show that you actually created it and, and mailed it to yourself. That is what will defeat the person who registered it after. You understand what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. And that is why you call it the poor man copyright. Because that is the way that you prove that you are the one who actually invented it. Uh, I think I'm gonna move on. There, there are a lot more yeah, man. stuff that I can get out of this, Mr. Chung. But you, you, you know why? There was a research that was done, Mr. Chung. I'm probably gonna we'll move on. It was found out that the brand Reggae Boys was mm -hmm. registered in the Western Hemisphere. And uh, well, 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 I does, mean, does, does, does law protect 
<clears throat> um, the, the, those persons who register it on this side but, of the world. You know, you know, um, I don't know. What I know is that we have the reggae boys football team. And we can go and play anywhere in the world. Right? Mm -hmm. And our product can be sold anywhere in the world. That's what I know. And JFF get gets the benefit um, from products that are sold to uh, by reggae boys. Yeah, we 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 sell products. What we, if we what products. if what if I put a reggae boy on the shirt and me go sell it without your consent? Let me alone. I reap the benefit. Yeah, but I can sue you. I can sue you. And people do it all over. Chin the Chinese create fake brands and sell them, right? And they sell it and, and they make a lot of money from them, right? But if they're challenged, right? Um, you have people who import fake brands in Jamaica and they're challenged and they're prosecuted. Mm -hmm. Right? So I mean, it, it's 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 a complicated thing, but at the end of the day, I, I have the reggae girls, I have the reggae boys team, and that is where the real value is. The real value is in the team. All right. right. So if someone, if, if you sell a product, right, and you you say, I am selling you this reggae girls thing, right? And I come out and say, that is not one of our products. Mm -hmm. What's the buyer going to say? The buyer is going to have a fake product. So where's True. the real value? The real value is in what I sell because yeah, but I, I am the authentic producer yes mr chung but what what had happened what had happened is that we understand that the brand was um registered and you know when you register something and the time elapsed i think the, it's about 30 days after if 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 it is not registered within that 30 days then somebody else can uh, can take over the brand and that's what we Some, understood so, that someone that else can place. someone else can legally register it. Yes, if, and if that's it, what if, we if heard if that happened out. coming out of research. Yeah, yeah, but but hold on, but hold on. What I'm saying, you know, is that even if someone goes and registers it, right, the product and the value of the product is still with me, right. So legal, suppose, all right, all right. From a, from a suppose, layman standpoint, suppose, it's with you. Suppose someone go and register it, and I change the name. I change the name of my team from 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 reggae girls to Jamaican girls. But the reggae girl, the reggae boy, the reggae girls brand would be greater because that has been with the team for years. No, but the brand, the brand is useless without the team, you know. The brand is useless without the team. If the team don't exist, what does the brand relate to? The team that used to exist, people die. I know, but why? Things are what, dissolved. What, 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 yes, I know, but I mean, are you? What, what are you gonna do? Be you, you? You're collecting things. If you are a collector, fine. So, 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 but, so, Mr. Chung, but, if Mr. But, but Jordan, the, brand, the current brand. Mm -hmm. is, is valuable because of the product that the brand supports are you gonna buy are, are, are you gonna buy something because it named apple or because you're getting the real apple brand that is what brands do you know brands yeah, but... are there and that's what the law does the law right will say... true, that example that you use that example that they use i think it it is it is ch challengeable wanting of a better term because you're saying that if 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 the reggae if the name is changed to reggae Jamaican um, girls, yeah. Jamaican girls yeah. but the reggae girls brand is out there, I think the reggae girls brand will still go get mileage because you said that the team is still playing. No, yeah, if Mr. Team, Jordan, the, if, if Mr. Jordan playing, dies, but, but, but hold on, the team will be playing under the name Jamaican girls. Yes, so the jersey, because, the current no, jersey. The corners who now say Jamaican girls. Yes, but Mr. 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 Chung, people are used well, to the well, regular well, girls, listen, well, so listen, they are listen, not going to take it, on to the name. Yeah, yeah, but listen, listen, listen. If you are a follower of football and I change my current jersey to say Jamaican girls and you want to go and buy a regular girls jersey that does not relate to the current team, 
then you're a collector and that's great yes and that that we see that happen yearly with teams changing their jersey and the pattern based on the on the sponsor that they have people and still when, buy them and, when, and when a new when a new manchester united jersey comes out what we, do you do go and buy the, get the one. new one and you have a collector's so hey, that's the, the one point i'm making mm -hmm. but that's the point i'm making you get the new one and the new one will be named jamaican girls so how does the 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 the, 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 the own, owning the one that said reggae girls come into play <laughs> the new one will name jamaican girls <laughs> i hear so what, do you want? what do you want you want you want the old jersey with the old name or you want the new jersey with the new name <laughs> because what you're following is the team if mr jordan pass on god forbid right now i don't want to call it down on him the brand jordan will still live on if somebody else come and make something close to it, it now makes no sense. A Jordan Who is that? Who is that? Michael Jordan? Yeah. So yeah, but Michael Jordan is retired. No, I'm saying if he pass away. Yeah. Uh, no, but if he brand passes still away. Live on. Yeah, but but he the brand lives on because he has retired and he passed away. So when when someone retires or passed away, the brand becomes very much more important because that is what the person ended their career at if i have a team that is country if i have, if i have a mercy if, if if tomorrow mercedes benz changes its name to something else you're gonna buy a car that called mercedes benz are you gonna buy the new car once they still are produce them one they may buy the mercedes benz yeah but they're not producing mercedes benz name anymore they're producing under a new name. What you gonna buy? Me, I go buy the Mercedes Benz, Mr. Chuck. <laughs> the, the old one. Yeah. You buy the old one. Yes. Well, you're a collector, and that's great. <laughs> that's great. Wait. I'm saying that brand <laughs> follows product. I, I get what you're saying, you know, but there's some yeah. some fine details like a, a mesh marina. There are some spaces that are left open. Yeah, that's yeah but, but so, I, I know, I know if I'm following a product, I go and buy the product, whatever it name. Right? If I know that a product name, a, a phone, Samsung, and tomorrow I change its name to, to Guangdong, right? I'm not going to buy one named Samsung that somebody else produced. I'm going to buy the authentic one that says I have changed my name. That's what that, I'm going to do. Because what I want is the quality of the product. Right? Brand represents the product quality. That's what brand does. And that's what the law tries to protect the consumer from. Right? To say that once you associate something with a brand, it must be the genuine product. Right? If that wasn't the case, somebody could go and they could take your name, just like what the Chinese do, Mm -hmm. and they make an inferior product and slap a label on it yeah right but i know that i have the team right and if i say that the team changes name tomorrow or you know if the jff say listen we don't like the name reggae girls anymore we're going to change to jamaican girls right the quality of the team is the important thing because when people go to the match People are going to be watching the Jamaican girls, you know. And mm -hmm. they're going to have the Jamaican girls jersey. And the yeah. branding around the match is going to be Jamaican girls. Yeah, so because you that... Sit, you, sit, you sitting in the stadium with your reggae girls jersey. <laughs> uh, hey, more But it has the you. same color. And that would be like people you. knowing where it's coming from. <laughs> but I but get anyway, what you're saying. I'm, I'm, I get that, what you're that's saying. My, that's my view. I'm not a lawyer. But I can yeah. tell you. I have been through, I have had the experience of a case like this already, mm -hmm. right? That I've, I've worked in a situation. I've seen um, two cases like this already, mm -hmm. right? And that's, that's why I say that. All right, no problem. Um, we might disagree on some aspect, but the, the fact mm -hmm. of the matter is that we're not arguing, we're not cursing out and behaving it as certainly, you know? And that's how discussions are robust and interesting all right so mm -hmm. in terms of the adidas deal mr chung um yeah. tell us what really 
will it do for Jamaica? Because I believe that this this it, it has a it was mentioned that there's some cultural thing to it, you know. And then the launch is gonna be happening on the reggae icon's birthday. So talk to us about that. What will it yeah, do for Jamaica? I don't, I don't know about the birthday. I mean, I mean that that's not that's not something that is coming from JFF um, point of view. Um, the Adidas, Adidas is a big brand, you know. Mm -hmm. Adidas is is um is 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 one of one of two major brands worldwide, you know. So Adidas is a big brand. Um, as in, uh, um, it 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 has great appeal, you know. The um the, the kits look good. Um, there is a financial benefit. Um, mm -hmm. to the sponsorship you know and it, it's on that basis you know um that it's going to be it's going to be a great deal i mean which other sporting um establishment in jamaica or team has had a partnership like this this is this is a huge partnership you know so i mean from that point of view it, it's just a great value you know, and, and for somebody to say that, hey, my organization is 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 re is working with a brand like Adidas. Mm -hmm. You know, Adidas has expressed confidence in you. That's it's a big, big deal for you, man. Yeah, man. It's yeah, a big, big. deal. Yeah. It's indeed a big deal. But what what we, we hear you talk about infrastructural development, will 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 that be a part of Adidas thrust going forward in assisting the world? landscape and development talent development of jamaica no 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 uh, um, that's not coming from adidas fifa is actually assisting us with um talent development okay. fifa has said that internationally there are two main focuses for this year is women's football and talent development and mm -hmm. fifa is has is giving us some money to assist with identifying talent and developing talent so mm -hmm. um Adidas is really the branding, right? But not the, the development part of it. I mean, that's not their focus. So no, so so the infrastructural development still is coming from um FIFA. From FIFA, yeah, man. FIFA and CONCACAF. Okay, okay. And that that amount, um, I think I heard you said it on another program, amounts to approximately two million US, right? For for yeah. what? For 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 the whole um combined amount from fifa and concacaf no man i didn't say that um I, I i said that we expect we get i think i think what, what i said is that we the 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 program um for the reggae girls um is just is just about their to, for them to to get to the world cup the mm -hmm. preparation and everything is is you know you're looking at over a million dollars us to get there well, this is what I heard you say, Mr. Chung, on another program. I listened very keenly and I made notes. Mm -hmm. You said um, the, 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 the interviewer asked you if there's a figure towards this whole thing. Towards um, which thing? To, to, towards um, the money that will be coming from FIFA. Oh, from and, FIFA? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I said is that we, def we get over a million dollars from FIFA every year. Right. And and yeah. with some from CONCACOF, it roughly goes up because it's for operations preparation for for, for 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 the world cup talent development and from concacof some will go like to parish and club support oh right 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 yeah okay. yeah i did say that sorry yeah. i did say that yeah yeah so it, it that that runs to about approximately two million dollars um, yeah approximately yeah yeah and and that is different from the the the, the money um, that you'll be getting from um, Adidas in terms of the kids sponsor. Yeah, man, that's different. That's different. That's different. Okay, okay. So, so John Wall, who is the assistant, he will be given the responsibility for, for talent, talent development. development. Right. No. Right. So, is that a different purview from the technical director? Will he be the technical director? Or no, it's not a, it's a different thing. But no, isn't that the role of the technical director? No, no, no. Talent development is going out and 
looking at Perth, looking for talent, you know, um, talent development is really like a scouting activity, you know, going out, identifying the talent and helping to develop it, you know, um, bringing them into camp, you know, and ensuring that the facilities are there to help them to develop. Your technical director, right, is someone who has responsibility overall for the, the technical aspects um, of it um, that, that ensures that the teams, you know, once the, 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 the selection is done, um, the, the teams are managed properly um, to ensure that there is enough infrastructure for the development of football, but talent development is specific to saying, hey, this is the talent out there. Let's go and, and, and find it. Um, let's go and develop the talent. You know, so that's where the, the subtle difference is. All right. And, and that tal talent development runs from the U13 right to the senior team? Right up, right, right up. But we, we, our main focus is on is going to be on the grassroots level, mm -hmm. um, because we we understand that that is where um, talent actually starts from. We have a good high school program, you know, um, but you know below the high school program, you don't really have you know good competitions. You don't really have good ways of unearthing the talent. So mm -hmm. we want to start from there, build up the talent from there, and. With a, with a specific focus also on women and on girls' football and, and getting them going. All right. So it, 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 is it safe to say that there's going to be competitions that are run by the JFF going forward? It, to, to, because in order to aid that talent development, because you mentioned that there's a well-run competition at the high school level, but below yeah. there might not be. Will that well, happen? I mean... I mean, the JFF don't necessarily have to run the program, but we can help to, to help structure it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I, I don't think that JFF should be running programs. You know, what we should be doing is supporting them. You know, we might okay. have a situation where we help to start the program, you know, like we do with the Women's League. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly we'd love for, for people to take it over at some point in the future. I mean, right now with the Premier League, for example, we have the PFJL you know, who, who runs it. You know, we put the infrastructure in place, we give the support, and, you know, they run it. But, I mean, the Jamaica Football Federation should not be running mm -hmm. all of these programs all over the place. That, that's so they, just difficult. They just basically give oversight and guidance yeah. Yeah. To, to, the, yeah. uh, to like, and, uh, an entity like in sports and others out there who might... Right. And we put the infrastructure in place, the rules in place, the regulations... Mm -hmm. I mean, when you look at our constitution, it says that we have overall responsibility for the development of football in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. You know, so if things are going wrong with our league, of course we can step in because we have that overall responsibility. Right. That's right. the mandate that we get from FIFA. Okay. And on, on the matter of, there's a question in the comment section on the matter of female football. Will there be any expansion to take it to like a, 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 a tier two or tier three yeah man, those, plans, one level. those plans were announced before you know mm -hmm. um the tier two might be a little delayed because we do have some teasing pains with the tier one um the the head of women's football in jamaica she thought that you know it might be best and i agree to actually push back the tier two start a little back to, mm -hmm. to later in the year uh, but we did we did have those plans in place and we did mention those plans we're trying to develop women's football but you know, a part of the problem, well, two two things is number one, you don't have as much women playing football as you do men. So the pool is 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 limited. Um and and we don't have um we still could use some more money in the men's league, but at least they get a much better they get much better pay than than the women's. So you know they have to be working um and at the same time playing. The other thing though is that as good as the reggae girls have been and they've qualified historically for two world cups no other team in the caribbean has done that men or women right and they play very good and the girls will come here they'll have a match and they'll play good and you know the boys didn't qualify but you call a boys match tomorrow and you get the attendance well well above what girls are the fact is that worldwide, 
people do not support women's football and women's sport, I should say, as much as they do men. So, you know, there's a lot of talk and people say, hey, you know, the girls are doing well, but you try to sell a ticket, right? And you give them the choice between the men's and the women's, they're going to choose the men's, even though the women are doing a lot better. I'm not, not hearing you. Yeah, that's a fact. Um, women's football not really supported, especially this yeah. side of the world. When you go like to the United States and those places, you see how well supported women. Yeah, but it's not as well supported as the men's. No, we know that they can't reach up to that level because, you know, the history right. of sports, it was seen as a ma male-dominated um sort of thing. So it, it, it the, 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 the women got an opportunity to start participate so it, it will never reach to that heights i believe and it doesn't well, matter I mean, how great the, the u.s team is doing it's, it's unfortunate because you know um the the women um especially in jamaica have been doing much better you know and as i said a lot of people talk and talk and talk and say hey what are you doing here what are you doing there and they'll say to you you know um it's like it's like people say boy we want football matches in jamaica right but the economics of it is that you have a match in jamaica and a lot of people don't support it mm -hmm. right they want to watch it on tv and if you don't carry it on tv they cuss you and say boy you know why 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 wasn't the thing on tv and then when you when when because of the economics you carry it overseas and play somewhere else where you get greater attendance they said boy why is the jff like that they don't want to play any matches in jamaica but you come and play it here and what you don't get the support. Everybody wants a free ticket. No, not everybody. Well, most <laughs> people. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people want a free ticket. You know? That's, that's but I get what you're saying. I get what people free rather free. get a free ticket than yeah. spend their money. But, I mean, I don't know. But how do you plan to get the support in that regard? Um, because certainly, in order to get the whole... 12th man back into the, 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 the purview, you have to have some home games, especially with the new kit coming out now. You have to have some home games. How you plan to get? Is no, there any got, incentive? We're, we're, we're going to have home drop? games, you know. We're going to have home games. Yeah, but how do you plan to galvanize the fans? Because just saying that you're going to have home games, who they're going to be playing, people are still not going to. Do you plan to set up? Right. Um, um ideas where you you drop the price at the bleachers you know something no, we're not we're not something. we're not gonna we're not gonna drop the price because that's an economic price that we're talking about mm -hmm. um we're gonna increase it the the product value okay you know so we're gonna Explain make sure that, that for, they're, for they're, the audience. They're, they're playing much better football you know we have a coach now that is 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 gonna you know we have great confidence that the team the the team is gonna improve you know um and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna see if we can appeal to the fan base based on that um and that i think is the way to go um you know you talk about the the support um when we played argentina in new york the support was fantastic mm -hmm. you couldn't find a seat in the house right and and a part of the problem too is that you know when you go to a, a red bull stadium in new york the seating capacity and therefore the revenue is much higher. Our stadium was like 35,000 people total. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, if you say that JFF needs to manage its finances, then those are some of the harsh decisions that need to be taken also. True. You know, we need to, we need to ensure that we're getting the, the bang for the buck. You know, so, I mean... We'd love to play every match in Jamaica, but economically, we just could not sustain it. Yes, definitely. Um, question from Paul Marriott. Uh, Mr. Chung, is the World Cup qualification prize money the same for men and women? Which I no, doubt. The men, that is the men are much higher, much, much right. higher. And are those disbursements issued before or after the tournament? um before before the tournament well well before yeah yeah before the tournament 
Um, in terms of infrastructure, um, is, are there any plans to improve the pitches, the parks around? I know the um, Premier League they are playing, they are playing on the, the, the yeah, the, you know that, the that that's park. that's a decision really for for the clubs. You know, we set a standard as to what the playing ground should be, but JFF is not the one who is going to go around and improve um, and and build out. I mean, we have our our center that we work on. Um, the president has spoken about, you know, we, we want to set up um, a few centers across the island. But for the pitches itself, you know, I mean, that's not something that we could take um, control of and say we're going to improve every one of them. You know, that's for the clubs, you know, that are playing. Um, how do they do that? They have to have money again. That's the thing. Um, you know, I hear people asking that question. How many people will go and pay to go and watch a, a, a match, a mm -hmm. Premier League match? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, and, yeah, and, man. and that that's that's a reality that we face. But I th I think that based on the improvement of, of of what is happening, I think probably more people are going out to watch these games. I don't I don't. Why know. the last one I went to, you know, the support is not that great, you know. Okay. You know, I mean, people will talk and people will say, boy, hey, this need time, but support is not that great. Okay. I guess the product has not improved to the magnitude where the people will come and support. But no, Jamaica I, I really have I, a free mentality kind of uh, I think the product the product is good, you know, but you know, it's just that's just how we are, you know. Yeah. You know, that's how we are. I mean, everybody wants a free ticket. Sure, sure. All right. Uh, our brother from, from, from UK over there in London, Rich Post Sports, he's saying, how concerned are you about the vexed issue of conflict of interest and stakeholders whispering to Coach Amir's staff about team selection? No, I'm not concerned about that. Um, you know, let me tell you something. I know certainly, even with the local coaches that were here, mm -hmm. the selection of the teams were entirely in the hand of the coaches. Right? I mean, contrary to what people say, I mean, I remember being at, at, at the stadium and seeing a team come on and we were like, oh, um, you know, I was there with the president and I'm saying, oh, I didn't know that so-and-so was playing. Mm -hmm. Right? So... There's no interference, right, um, in terms of coaches. The other thing for us to understand is that when we say that the JFF and the board members can influence a team, we're really speaking down about the, the, the integrity of the coach himself, you know, mm -hmm. because it means that he can be influenced easily. Mm -hmm. So understand that when you criticize one party for saying you can't do that, you're really criticizing the coach more than anybody else to say that he can be influenced or bought. Right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that. I've never seen where we had those coaches. right? And certainly the current one is not like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? so, so understand that we implicate people Yes. When we make those suggestions. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah, we, 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 we hear you on that one, um, Sir Chung. Um, that, uh, Everton Jackson, if fans prefer to watch the games on TV, why not show more games on TV and take a cut of ad revenue? Is, is it as easy as it was said? No, it's not. It's not. Um, first of all, um, when we sell our broadcast rights in Jamaica, um, because we don't have a lot of, it's like, like, like in the U S where a Super Bowl ad, a half, a half a minute ad will sell for millions of dollars. Right. Mm. Um, in Jamaica, what we have to consider is that 
we have to negotiate broadcast rights. We're not going to get a lot of money for them in Jamaica. Um, and therefore, we have to make a decision like we did with the last match the girls played. You know, do we encourage people to watch it at home and then give up our revenue? Or do we say, no, we're not going to broadcast it live and try and make some revenue? And that's what it boils down to. You know, we could always hear the thing, but... And then there's a production cost to hear it. You know, if the TV company does not think that it is worth their while, they might say to us as JFF, you know, pay us an additional amount, which they have done to, to actually produce it. So it's, it's not as straightforward as that. You know, it's, it's definitely not as straightforward as that. You know, there, there's a lot of things that go into that decision. Does the quality of opponents cause the, the, the stadium or the, the games not to be supported, whether on the female or the male side? Oh, yeah, man, definitely, definitely. definitely. So that has to be up now, um, Sir Chung, in terms of getting the quality opponents. Um, You know, you have Adidas and there are some big teams aligned to Adidas. You know, you can yeah, yeah, on yeah. That but, part. but the first thing is that you have to negotiate with the team that you bring in, mm -hmm. right? And, I mean, as I said, we have 36,000 people that the stadium holds. Mm -hmm. So if we were to bring a big name, like a Messi or Ronaldo, right? People are saying, boy, I want to see them, but are you going to pay $15,000 to see him? Because there's a cost to getting an Argentina or a Brazil. You know, mm -hmm. significantly more than other teams. So, okay. I mean, when we go and we spend that money and we say, okay, this is the cost, right? The cost of Brazil is maybe two times more or three times more the United States and we go and get that team. Then are you going to pay two or three times more for the ticket? We have to consider <laughs> that. People want to say $25,000 for watch Brazil. <laughs> yeah, so you, you, you understand what I'm saying? Those are considerations we have to take because at the end of the day, you know, we're going to say, hey, come in and you can watch him for $5,000. And guess who gets left with the bill? No, 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 man. <laughs> exactly. You know, so we have to we have to consider those things. Yeah, definitely. You know, <laughs> I mean, we, we want, we want, we want steak and we have mackerel money. <laughs> 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 but as you mentioned, let me love it. All right, let I hope I, let, you know what. Let me ask you the question because I had this question to ask you for so long. Because yeah. it was said that many other issues that the JFF had had to do with finances, financial constraint. Know that you're in a better position than you were in. In terms of monies that you might have known, uh, the big contract, the monies that coming in from FIFA and CONCACAF, it will be spent in a, in a, in, 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 well, I don't want to really say, well, yeah, will it be a difference in how you, you, you operate? Because them say, when, when you don't have money today, you know, and tomorrow you, 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 you see a whole lot of figures probably in a bank account. Is all your rear can start to punch in things on Amazon or wherever you're shopping at. Is it going yeah. to be wisely spent then? I, I don't want to well, put well, it in I'm, that I'm, term, I'm not, but I'm not I'm not like that, I can tell you. I mean, um when when I always got my bonuses at the end of the year, I used to save it. I never sent it. I act mm -hmm. like I never get it. Right? <laughs> um and that's just how I am. Yeah. Um. So, you know, I not going to make because I have more money that I'm going to spend it, right? The first thing I think about is how can I, you know, um, put aside that money, right? So, if 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 the the program is the same like it was last year, there's no need to spend more money. You know. Um. So I'm not like that. Not because oh, more okay. money is coming in. You know. I I I'm not the type of person who 
who is going to say, hey, I have more money now, so I must go out and buy this car or that Plus, car. Plus, yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> All right, that, I hear you. <laughs> All right, Omar McFarlane is saying, um, half-time entertainment was a big thing at the stadium in, 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 in the past. Will this be a focus going forward to pull support based on the familiar, the, based on the family value package? Um, I don't know. I mean, that's for them to, that's for the organization on the day. Um, how many people actually go to a football match to watch a halftime entertainment? You go to a football match to watch a football match. Yeah, but that's an added perks of being there, Mr. Chuck. Yeah, but 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 do you go to the match because of the entertainment? No, I don't think that's the primary reason. Yeah, but you go there, you 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 go there to watch the match, and you're placed in. You, you go there, you go. Uh, I want a car dealer to buy a car. A car, you come out. No, but when they reach, when they reach, no, what are they? When they reach, not the lobby. When they reach, not the lobby, Mr. Chuck. You get C, you get this, you get that. You never expect that. Yeah, but 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 it all comes down to economics again, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, listen, listen. If you are going to watch Brazil play, and there's no entertainment, right? And you are going to watch a a a a a, 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 a low a, a, a team from from one of them small islands that play, and there's a lot of entertainment. Which match are you gonna go to? The one the Brazil with no entertainment. Or the small island team with a lot of entertainment at halftime. No man, that that that's that that's like an anomaly. A, a anomaly, Mr. No, but, that, Mr. but, Mr. but Mr. that's Mr. the point. You can't, point you can't that. use that one depend. Yeah, that, that, the argument is flawed, man. <laughs> no, it's not. You can't it's compare not. Brazil it's playing not. with a with a with a small island team. No, no Mr. But the point I'm trying to make is that the reason why people go to football matches, right, is to watch. The football match right yes I'm and i agree saying, i'm not saying that there will be no entertainment i'm just saying that it's not something that i think about right now when i'm thinking about a football match you know it, it might happen but and, the and, the, the, and day, the, po the point is taken you know mr mr chung but the fact is that these added things that can assist because what they tell us you know you can't do things the same way and expect a different result you understand so i know that you might not be thinking about anything other than football but there are these little perks that comes along with football football and entertain mm -hmm. entertainment is like this yeah but but listen so, listen listen I, and i'm and i'm and i'm very adamant about it i mean i'm not saying there won't be any entertainment but you know i'm not going to think about the product just because of entertainment. No, the quality of the football is the important thing. And once you go there, you, you win that argument. Once you go there at the quality, but yeah. with the quality again, you still can add the little perks. Of course you can, <laughs> but but then that, that comes on to a decision on the day. Yeah. You know, as, as to what we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. So it's not something I would put in the grand scheme of things and say, hey, we have to have entertainment at a football match. No, we're not saying that you have to. You, know, yeah. you have like games, certain games, because in, in order to market the product in a in a different way for it to be yes. attracting, and I'm not saying you have to do it. Well, the the commenter who asked the question, I don't think he's saying that you have to do it. He's just pulling different ideas from different areas to see how best because you don't have to do the entertainment package the same way each time. And you don't have to do it every game, but there are things that can be done to actually. Yeah, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm not saying that it won't happen. All I'm saying is that mm -hmm. um, it's not something that I sit on and think about that, boy, we're going to have a football match, so we need to get entertainment. You know, if the entertain, if it happens, then that's fine. But, you know, it's about, I mean, it's not like we can put on a. A, a entertainment show like what happens at Super Bowl, as somebody mentioned. Yeah, Our yeah. entertainment is some people getting a mic down there, right? <laughs> and them singing to some songs. <laughs> you know, I mean, at the Super Bowl, I mean, that's fascinating. But yeah. even so, most of the people 
if any at all, right? Who go to the Super Bowl go to watch the teams play? Yeah, the primary thing is the is yeah. the is the game, right? Yes. And and the the entertainment is is great, but you know the difference between the 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 the, the entertainment there and here is that the entertainment at the Super Bowl has distribution rights value and add value so a lot of people at home will mm -hmm. watch the halftime show and therefore you do a lot of advertisements around it yes yes true and you get to pay it back yes you think a lot of people in, uh, in jamaica watching the halftime show on tv are they going to, to take a bathroom break or get some snacks <laughs> or something <laughs> but i get what you're saying Saying Mr. Chung, but it is something you say you know you know think about it, but based on yeah. the question that the person asks, you can't think about it now. <laughs> because it, I think it adds value, um, as Jason is saying, and others are saying in the comment section. So if you if you never think about it, put it down in a notation now. Or something right. you can't okay. think about. All right. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> yeah. any, any any more questions, people? Let me check, let me check, because the comment section is running hot in I guess, well, that's, <laughs> imagine people know they can win a car at a match. Mm, that's interesting. What do you say about that one? Yeah, man, the person who suggested that can donate the car, <laughs> and then we'll raffle it. <laughs> so if you want to sponsor, be a yeah, sponsor, sponsor of the JFF. Yeah, sponsor the car, and we'll, and we'll raffle it. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> yeah, man, it's good that we can have a little laugh, you know. <laughs> now, um, Omar McFarlane is saying entertainment is a big um part of our culture. Big picture, even the football players feed off the vibes and atmosphere. Uh, uh KY is asking about player orientation package. I don't know if that question is clear, uh, what, but what do you understand that? it? No, I don't understand what that is. Is it, is it a case where the players come in? I don't know if that's what he's saying, but I'm trying to decipher. Is it a case where when the players come in, um, for them to be known by the fans, will 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 names be on the new jerseys going forward? Because that was a big thing in, in, in the previous Yeah, campaign. yeah, yeah. So I think going forward, I haven't seen the final case yet, but I think going forward, the, um, the names are going to be on the, on the jerseys. Okay, that is something that is important to the fans mr chung and 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 i guess it came with the the who is the sponsor because i mean adidas have some good kids in and and well yeah. i don't know club fo most of the international teams that they sponsor have their names in in, in on the back of the jerseys so i guess yeah, yeah that tradition will have to live on um Uh what is Chris saying? Um he asks about tier two and if it's going to be broadcast this season and will it be sponsored? I can't I can't comment on that because we haven't okay. finalized that yet. Yeah. Um Everton Jackson is saying, What about this idea? Sounds good, but let me hear what you say about it. What about double headers to you know combine the two fan bases? Well, um, it, don't work, it don't really work like that, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, let me tell you something. Sometimes you have a doubleheader match and what people go for, they just turn up for the feature match. You know, um, mm -hmm. so it's, it's not, it's not like a, it's not like a doubleheader, double bill movie at the theater, you know. Um, you know, people will, a lot of people just turn up for the feature match, you know, because we do have matches like, you know, when the girls were playing and or the boys playing and you have two matches. The earlier match you don't get a lot of people there. Mm -hmm. The main match, you'll get a you'll get a lot more people there. And, and that's just how people are. You know. Um some right. of us will go and want to see everything, but some mm -hmm. people just want to see the main thing. Right, that's true, that's true. So you might get diverse thing there in, in yeah. that situation. Uh KY say what is the orientation process? In terms of the players, why don't we have proper professional press conferences? I like how Usain and Shelley does at the airport. 
Oh, like the the the, the is is there any probably ad campaign like a a, a a star player, quote unquote, that will be used as the face of of the new kit coming in? I guess that's what they're saying. Or and it, will there be any press conferences going forward? Yeah, there, well, I mean, we, we always have press conferences. We have press conferences all the while. Um, and you know, we'll have a press conference to announce the launch of this one also. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, but I, I can't comment on, on, on the details of the, the ad campaign. But mm -hmm. we always have press conferences. You know, and I don't know what you call a professional press conference. A press conference is a press conference. You know, um, you have something to say and you organize it properly and you invite the media. You know. Yeah. All right, Mr. Mr. Chung, one, one of the, the pet peeves of the fans is getting or having these jerseys. Let me tell you, Adidas jersey, loved by many. Worse, it's going to our reggae boys' color, it's going to sell mm. off. But the fans want to know that it will be accessible. We know it's Adidas. Well, Adidas, 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 will be selling it. Adidas will be selling it worldwide, you know, so people can buy it. Okay. What yeah. about the, the fans in Jamaica who would want to go and pick up? We know there's yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna try and have a few um available, but it will be available, you know, people can buy it and you know, um they can buy it online. Okay, you know? and all right, yeah. so the, we know that there's the Adidas app, the Adidas websites and all of these yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. We, we're gonna try and get some physical in stores, but you know. Um, it's gonna be available worldwide. Everybody got to Amazon anyway, right? No, but people want the authentic one, you know. When they come out to them, yeah, man, but, it's, but it's authentic. It's authentic. I mean, when, 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 not, when they, not all of them on on Amazon is authentic, man. No, believe me, Mr. Chuck, no, believe. but but you no, know, it depends on what you're buying and you know and where you're buying it from, you know. So it, just better like, you tell them pick up on the Adidas app. Are the Adidas um, website. Yeah, but anybody can anybody can buy an, an authentic thing or or something that's not authentic. You know, it, it's 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 a buyer. You know how the buyer chooses, but but it's it's going to be available all over. All right, so that is good. I see a question there from Rich Post Sports again from London. Just wondering, what were your thoughts and feelings before, during, and after that octagonal? campaign oh you really want us to relive that um rich Paul? which octagonal campaign the last campaign he's making reference to oh you mean you mean you mean the the world cup mm -hmm. qualifications that's like a little while ago right <laughs> <laughs> i mean everybody is disappointed anybody who are really make a disappointed eh? yeah <laughs> yeah Disappointing, yeah, no, never no, no, I really live it either. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Um, what would be your advice to the 12th man? Re levels of optimism, re Jamaica's on field and off field status are they similar? Um, when you say are they similar, what do you mean? All right, leave off that part, yeah, yeah. Um, well, are the levels of optimism, optimism, read really the well, I mean, optimism is a personal thing, you know, but I mean, as I said, just watch what we're doing and, you know, you make your personal judgment from there, you know, um, we have, we have a good brand, you know, and, and, um, watch what we're doing. We're putting all the infrastructure in place, the proper coaching, you know, um, providing the infrastructure support that we need, the talent development, you know, focus on women's development and, we 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 we're we're pretty confident that the product is gonna do well. Okay. You know, yeah. All right, vibing is saying if I buy the jersey on the Adidas website, will the reggae boys benefit financially from the proceedings? Yeah, we get twenty percent of all um the sales of all branded items. On a year that people go and yeah. support. Yeah. And next thing, Mr. Chung, you have some memorabilia. People want car stickers on them. Something. That, where, where can they be found? Where can people? We are we are items? working on we are working on developing our e-commerce site, mm -hmm. right? And developing those things. So we're going to be looking at all of that. 
All right. As you mentioned the site, there, there, this just jumped out back at me. I had this question in mind, you know, but so sometimes we need to write down these things. I play like say me can't remember everything, you know. But I remember there was a website for the JFF. And some time ago the, the website is dormant now, but we're putting it back up. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. What and the, what about the YouTube channel? You're planning on creating a yeah, new man, one? Yeah, man, yeah, man. We're gonna we're gonna create a YouTube channel. We're looking at that also. All right, cool. All right. Rich Paul again he said, Should we trust the process on and off the pitch? I'm aware concerned that Mr. Chung does not necessarily feel that Jamaica is a natural footballing nation. I don't know how that person is aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Rich know. Paul. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, listen, coach. I, I, I mean, I know it's been a while. I'm gonna have to run. Yeah, man. <laughs> hey, Rich boy, you say you run the, you say you run um the the, 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 the great genset man. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you know, maybe as a crystal ball or something. <laughs> But um, share your final assurance to the fans, uh, Mr. Chung, before you... you, um, you yeah, what I say is finally what I'd say is that, you know, I appreciate the sort of um, interaction. I think mm -hmm. the fans are very important. And, you know, as I said, we are going to try and do everything um, to, to, um, to, to make the product better. I mean, that's our objective, you know, um, and, and that's what we're going to do, you know. All right. Yeah. Yeah, man, and and like I said, your your presence on these platforms, Mr. Chung, it, it goes a far way. Yeah. Uh, I think the fans are appreciative of this, and the, the uh, like you said, the interaction is good, and the fans feel now apart. They are in the know, and in 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 recent past, most times the information would be, you know generating from the the, the 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 vloggers which information mm -hmm. still generating from us but i mean to have someone who is this relevant always accessible because we, we we know we notice you have been doing the rounds and people you'll be on military gunas a channel tomorrow you have to go and and support that one again check it out support our military guna because um Whatever question you missed, and since Rich Paul run Sir Chung, you have to catch him tomorrow over by uh, Military Guna. So again, Mr. Chung, we really appreciate you being here. Yeah, man. And, right. and it, it, it is well, and we believe that we have, we have a look of faith in, in what you're doing yeah. and what you're saying. So we just hope to see the fruits. All right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, man. All have right. a great evening. Okay. All right. Thanks. You too. All yeah, right. Man. Thanks. So, people, there you have it, Mr. Dennis Chong, the General Secretary of the Jamaica Football Federation. Rich Poor, see me a teleboy, you. See me a teleboy, you. You and your one bag of question, brother. <laughs> eh, 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 Rich Poor, me a teleboy, you, you know, man. <laughs> Rich poor <laughs> uh, who's that? Rob Smith. What go on for the game? Um um Chris. I'm gonna go check out that game there and see what I go on. It's a hot game, you know. I can see what I go on with that game. I want that game that I go on for now. A sports marks I care that game there. But I I trust that. Um with this run that the 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 the, the Gensec is doing, I I trust that this is well appreciated by the fans and you know ball game are going so arnett gardens 2 
the unbeaten Mount Pleasant coach Tapa Whitmore 2 1. Rich boy, you, can't, you want to jump on for the last um, 15 minutes? Alright, so me drop the link there, Rich boy. Can you run the boss? I have come live look about the place. I remember Mr. Chung has a track record, you know, so we just hope that it will follow soon. Where's the yellow card for Rich Poor? Oh, that's. It's into the back of the net, but it's offside. Reed and D kind of create problems. <laughs> Where's that? Ash? You're not know, a good mode in the building, Mr. Chow. Your thoughts and feelings posted WC. Hey, Rich Poe, does company come tell us? See me drop the link there. Come tell us what are your thoughts. Yeah, man, a lot end to end action 1 1. You know, the man they must say it not over till it over Mount Pleasant. All right, Zenat, let us see. But the stadium not pop, but it I miss the whole bus spaces in a in a bench man. On it, Garden play ball well, quick, you know, man. Ball. On it, Garden attacking on the right hand side. Oh, try to sing, swing that one in. But no, no, he wasn't. He wasn't in the media. I think he came on one channel. I think man in I, I am sure sports. As far as I know. Decent ball inside the box. Well defended. That looks like Topi. Oh, good turn in the box. Into the back of the net. Brilliantly done by Arnett Gardens. Yeah, man, on it, red man. A good goal, a good goal. A good goal, man. Wow. Janet, the right time. Who scored? Uh -huh. Arnett Gardens. Upset on the card. Mount Pleasant's in a trouble. Oh, what is Yeah, man. 3-1 three, one? Three, one now. 3-1. Mount Pleasant has been on a good run under such, I mean, Tapa. Um, shows a, a competitive league. All the best, Arnett. Well done. I wonder mm -hmm. if you can see it through to the final whistle. Respect. <laughs> Big up yourself, Rich Poe. You run, you run, you run, Mr. 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 Jensen. What a thing, eh? Mr. <laughs> Chung, Mr. Dennis Chung. What a thing. <laughs> CD, what are your thoughts? You no, have man, been no, 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 no. Me call if you ask your thoughts. 
Look how much question we ask the man, and you want to ask me question now. What are your thoughts? <laughs> don't go like your my, freeze, my, my internet is my internet is breaking up. No nah, man, don't go yeah, like man. your freeze, man. Hey, wait. Well, uh, Rich Poo run to me, say no question from him. Oh, the goalkeeper just went down like that. Oh, fresh, fresh guy, are you tackling him? Fresh. <laughs> are you tackling the baller? You run, man. Oh, you got a knock from early in the game. Okay. Chambers, are, come on, I know. Akeem Chambers. Akeem Chambers in him. Man, want to come off because the goal score upon him, man. man. Oh, I must big up Fresh God and one one for the super chats. One one super sticker. Um, brain drain with the super super chat. So big up. Yeah, man, the league can go on, man. That's why. We can't agree with when mana I promote the local league. Uh, our football is enough. So we have to watch it. Boring or not. But this looks exciting. Here comes Mount Pleasant. A wicked cross inside the box, but it's a bit wayward. Phillips again. And it's in the 60 um, first minute. There's still a lot of time for Mount Pleasant to come back in this, you know. In discipline, one. Decent chip upside. Oh, bro, not by the defense. Fresh God, that's where I see it. Him. Didn't look the quickest of at left back, but always seemed to deliver good quality. Yeah, 
Reason, boss. They're not, you're not a reason, right? Then I don't know. <laughs> I'm Janet to just follow and see what I'm going with the game. It seems like you're engrossed. Yeah, Downtime man. following Mr. Chung's um you're on the boss, penultimate man. appearance. Yeah. It's been a good time with you. He spent a good time. Mr. Chung has been the face of the JFF. 2023 20, good and true. Uh, wait, CD, do you have any, any, not misgivings, but are you palpably aware how Mr. Chung is front and center of this whole thing? The communication, the transparency, the professionalism. He ticks most, if not all, of the boxes thus far. I don't know quite why he had to um, pick up and leave at that particular juncture. I don't think the question was too hard. Uh, he did spend a good amount of time with you. You asked some pertinent, reasonable questions. I'm going to re-watch the show and uh, digest what was said and how it was sent. But Jamaica is not a bony fighting necessarily footballing culture. It's an argument. It's an argument because expectations is what I'm talking about, you know, right about now, you know, CD. Mm. Expectation levels. I mean, look at the world under 17 situation. Twice we've qualified in, what, 20 years. And this is a tournament that is held regularly. Jamaica's only made one World Cup in 1998. We failed miserably in the last octagonal campaign where hopes were high despite managerial question marks. We thought we had the talent pool. The tactic was to go for the overseas talent to just make sure that things were locked down. But we saw how things finally panned out. There's a lot of work to do as far as Jamaican football senior level is concerned, let alone at grassroots level. So the veneer looks shiny. It looks clean, crisp. The line, the patter from Mr. Dennis Chung is of a high quality. But I'm mindful of those memories of past campaigns, the most recent. Listen, if we don't know where we're coming from, how are we going to know where we're going? I'm not one for ducking the hard questions and ducking the realities of what was past, what happened. We need to take and learn lessons from that, garner up ourselves for where we are now and where we want to be. And part of that question and reasoning is, is just what are the expectation levels for Jamaican footballing fans as we speak? Should we again be saying, yes, we're one of the big shots? To be linking and going toe to toe with Canada, Mexico, and America. Me now go say big shot, you know. Me now go say big shot, you know. Oh, me now go say big shot, it because work has to be put in. Has you to understand? Be. It can't. It now go happen overnight, just like that. And that's why I'm asking the question with all what administration is doing, and they are putting things into perspective. There's still another aspect of this. Of, of the football, which includes the managers, the players, the equipment managers, and all of these people. Because we, if we have a nicer run our administration, you know, and you no know, ball now play good enough, they are going to be under pressure. So, man, I'll get the pink slip and all of them something there. Spot on. Spot on. That's that's the reality, and that's just what I wanted the fans and Mr. Chung to be aware of. In in fact, I, it was a, a a bit of an olive branch, if you will, because if we realize or appreciate that Jamaica has a lot of work to do, that there are, I was going to say financial constraints, though it's ironic that with this Adidas deal, uh, uh, the coffers look a little more healthier. Though he mentioned that debts from as far back as 1998, 
have to be paid off. So the climate, when it's all said and done, when, when the points that have been made um, have to be taken into consideration, including exactly what you said, CD, that results are important. Style of play are important. Preparation is important. Team selection, team gelling, unity, mm. um, players being available um, for regular selections, having a vision and a direction. It's a big challenge. And there's a small matter of opponents. We're not going to have opponents lying down. Panama, El Salvador, Honduras, Costa Rica. They're going to be coming correct. The, 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 the big, not the elephant in the room, the big um, positive or bonus is that we've got the proverbial open goal but it's not quite an open goal. We can say there's one or two defenders in the way to prevent Jamaica from reaching the 2026 World Cup. That's one of the big shining objectives and aims before the Jamaican footballing public. That 2026 campaign, Canada, America, Mexico hosting, six and what, six and a half, six and two thirds places available. We don't want to miss that party, but we need to be well cognizant and well aware of the work that needs to be done. And we don't want the bag of drama, unnecessary drama, hampering mm -hmm. the campaign. That's what I'm wary of because there's good things ahead, but the hard work needs to be put in place. And um, yeah, I mean, weren't you a little perturbed when Mr. Chung was was being very realistic. He was saying, look, the Reggae Boys campaign, it, 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 it's not been firing on all cylinders. And yet, if you had a Reggae Boys match matched up and lined up against a Reggae Girls match, where they're making successive World Cup appearances, he still thinks that there will be a larger crowd at the Reggae Boys game. And yeah, that's... Man. Rel but that's relative. He wasn't saying anything about it's going to be packed and jam and ram out. And it's interesting that the, the, the levels of um, enthusiasm for the game of football was something that Mr. Chung was painfully aware of. You were talking about, you know, bringing the likes of Brazil, for example, to play. Who, who would go and attend? And he pointed straight to the coffers, the pockets. Who would pay to come and watch these games? Who would fit foot the bill? So he was painfully aware of certain realities surrounding Jamaican footballing culture. And I found that very interesting, which is why he may not have been at pains to answer that question at length, um, because sometimes the truth hurts. What is undisputable is that hard work needs to be done and professionalism is at a premium as well as lines of communication. So. Shows like your CD, um, IMAX it, uh, Formula, I am sure Ryan LFC, Halftime TV, uh, 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 all of the social media that are, 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 are promoting the game of football, which is the number one sport worldwide, where Jamaica are concerned, you know about the wagonist culture. It's particularly prevalent in Jamaica when it comes to football. And it's not easy getting things that the private sector involved in football um, and, you know, it, 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 money plays a very important part in success. But so does talent. So does enthusiasm. So does professionalism. There's a whole bag of ingredients, viewers and subscribers that go into producing a winning team. The formula is not easily attained. London, England calling here. England, the home, apparently, of football, apparently, I say. One World Cup title in 1966 on home territory. No European championships of note. And yet, when it comes to resources, money is really no object, one could say. They've got plenty of talent, structures in place, academies, coaches of a high standard, and yet, what do we see? And what have we seen? We've seen them go to Qatar, bundled out by a French team, 
not firing on all cylinders. And yet we are meant to assume that Jamaica, sweet Jamaica, Jam Rock, are going to waltz in to join the big party. It's not an easy road. And I know, viewers and subscribers, I know Brain Drain, Rock Fort, big up yourself. I know it's not a good memory. Mr. Chung was at pains to try to answer what his thoughts were, his thoughts and feelings before, during, and after the octagonal campaign. I thought it would be right, rather interesting for Mr. Chung to express his opinions from the 12th man standpoint. He was not a part of the JFF. I wanted to get his insights. What were his thoughts and feelings he as was, the campaign he was, was about to start? He, he, was not the face, he was not the face of the JFF, but I mean, he was involved in the finances and all of that part of it. So as a, as a, as a 12th man, it wouldn't be that easy for him to answer that. Well, I'm not going to speak uh -huh. for him, but I can say he was a part. Uh -huh. so it's not like he's totally new to this um position but richard i am i i i am sorry we have to close off it is now five minutes after the hour and we certainly have to close off the show it was a good time thank you for coming Indeed. on and, and and giving your few cents on the matter um well received um big up to the fans who, who stick and stay thanks very much for tuning in everyone we really appreciate you being here and just stay safe, people. Until next time, peace out. You continue to get content around here. Your style and your flavor oh, yeah. make the city rock. They must say the season come out with a bang. Coach Minzy, best around here. Remember that.